Hi creatives, Chidi here. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing great. Today I brought another interesting tutorial, the shawl collar neck flay gown that you can see on the screen. I shared every bit of the process I used to make this beautiful gown. So if this sounds like what you'd be interested in knowing how it is done, then come with me and let's get started. Here I have my pattern, basic pattern already drafted, ready for alteration. Here I have my front pattern, the skirt and the back of the pattern. As you can see, I didn't add that to the back of my pattern. I just want to leave it, cut it out like that and fix my dart at the mid when I am stitching it. So that is just it. So come with me as I show you every bit of what I did here. I am cutting out the patterns. That is all I am doing here. So if you are new here, welcome. If you are an old subscriber, um, thank you for always supporting. I love you all. If you are yet to subscribe, do well to subscribe so that you will be the first to know each time I upload a beautiful, lovely video as I always do. That is if you turn on your notification bell. So here I have cut out my patterns and here is the front of the pattern. I will start with the front. I'll be altering the front to what I want. That is the shawl collar pattern. Here is my front pattern and I already have a fresh paper on. That is my neckline that I have already drawn to the depth that I want it. That is exactly what you're going to do. You will drop your neckline to where you want and draw it just as you have seen on that basic pattern. Here I drew 5 inches from that borderline, the borderline of the paper. You will understand why I did this and also on my fold I am giving about 5 inches also. Okay, Do the same for yours. You will understand why I did all this. As we progress in the tutorial I'm pinning down my pattern so that it will not be shifting as I alter this beautiful pattern so right here I'm just ensuring everything is where it is supposed to be now I have marked my midpoint where I want you know it's an overlapped shower color so I extended the front by about four and half inches okay watch how I am going to you know connect this neckline to that extension I heard note that I also marked my midpoint that is middle front very very important even while cutting you will mark the middle front just watch and you will understand every bit of what i did here is the neckline and i have already extended the front and also connected the neckline to that extension i will also be extending what you can see here i will measure the back pattern okay i got about three and a half inches that is what i am going to extend the neckline of this front by just follow the line up to extend this that is what i just did there i followed the line up to extend it now i'm going to come out by how wide you want this color to be but i will advise you to make it about four 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 and a half inches okay use about four and a half inches so that the roll of your color will just be fine and well you know lapped here I'm just following this guideline. I'm using my shoulder slope as a guideline to get, yes, that is just what I used it for, to get a guideline for shaping my shower collar. Now I've marked where I want the collar to end and I'm going to connect it to that extension. Watch closely. If you want, if it doesn't have an extension, you will take it to your mid center front but right now we have an extension if you like you can still draw your collar straight it's the same thing okay so right here i am going ahead to connect it to that extension if it's not an overlapped um, gown you just take this thing to the mid front there on the waist okay i hope you understand but now it's an overlapped um shower collar this is how I am drawing my line. 
you can take this neckline straight that was what i was saying or curved anyway it doesn't matter okay now you have seen how i have connected my neckline to that extension just watch closely to see my alterations i'm going ahead to cut open the side boss that because i will be closing it up i opened my waist that so that i can comfortably close my side boss that can you see that i'm going to put it in place now so that it doesn't shift as i make my further alteration so that is it you are going to blend you see the space there i've blended it that is the same thing that you will do all right so that is it i'm going to stick on my masking tape there before i now close up my that i just want to get the straight line i'll close it up to be able to cut out this pattern comfortably all right beautiful ensure you do the same so that you will not fall short of fabric there and that is that i've cut out this is my shower color pattern the front pattern this is how the shower color is going to roll you'll see every bit of what i did even how i put these clothes together it's a very interesting tutorial i'm sure you will enjoy it i'm sure you are already enjoying it so the next thing i'm going to alter will be the skirt you know the skirt part is a flea skirt i'm just marking that mid to meet the mid of the dart. I'm drawing a slash line to be able to spread my skirt. You know how much I like using basic patterns to get the kneaded pattern. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this skirt, the basic skirt pattern to do this. So here is the fabric I'll be using. That is a crepe fabric for my lining and that darker one is the fabric that is a duchess that I'm using for this tutorial. So this duchess is the main fabric while the crepe is the lining fabric. I chose two fabrics that can stretch. So now I can, I know you are observing what I am doing. Aside what I'm saying, just observe. I'm trying to meet the two points. You see how I folded my fabric on triangle because this flay will be cut on triangle okay this very one because of how the fall is it will be cut on triangle i'm just going ahead to pin it down so that it won't be moving duchess has a way of being slippery so i'm just doing everything i can so that the fabric will not be moving as i alter my pattern watch closely to understand i will be closing my waist that and then open the slash line watch watch to watch to understand i've treated this um in one of my tutorials maybe i will link it up in the description box just in case you want to know how to get different degrees of flay using your basic skirt pattern i'm going to link it up so that you will easily watch it and understand perfectly how this is done so here i've closed up my dart and i've opened the slash line that is the first step to this alteration. Note that I folded my fabric on triangle. Now watch what I'm doing. I've opened again and I'm spreading it further. So that is basically it. I'll pin it down also. This is not the length I need. I'll be measuring out the remaining length after... I have finished the spreading. I'm going to measure out the remaining length. Now I'm cutting out the waist. Beautiful. Aside what I'm saying, just watch closely. You will understand perfectly what I'm doing. I'll use my tape to measure the remaining length. Feel free to use the length you desire. This skirt is about the knee length, the skirt I'm using for this alteration. So, but I want my. Um, gown to be about three quarter three quarter gown three quarter length they are not like a full maxi gown okay so i'm just trying to complete the length to where i want it so that is what i did there and i'll be connecting the marks i made down there 
I'm just trying to push my fabric so that you see what I'm doing. It's not good to push your fabric, but for the sake of this um, tutorial, I have to do that so that you see everything I did. Now, this is how I connected that those marks and I am cutting it out. Beautiful. So I've cut out my flay on triangle. You know, you can cut your flay on cross grain or, or straight grain. But this very one, because of how the fall is, it is a bias green. It's not a straight green. A straight green or cross green will not give you that kind of fall. I mean the way the flay is flowing. Okay. So now watch, I am cutting the front part of my flay right now. Watch how I folded this flay. Okay. One side gave me the full one. It's still on triangle, right? One side gave me the full, full, uh, see, watch. The inner side is running straight. It's still on triangle. I didn't get this edge to that, the end, like the other one. You know this front is overlapping. I hope you understand what I mean. It's going to overlap. So that front part is not going to get to the side. So I folded it. As I'm folding the triangle, I ended it before the side waist. Of the flay I hope you understand so that is what I did and I am going ahead to like cut it out I've gone ahead to cut it out I hope you understand what I mean now look at this look at the video and you will understand what I mean by see what I did I folded it on triangle but I didn't allow this place to get to the waist to the side waist I hope you understand because it's going to stop exactly is going to stop before the side of the waist. So this is how it's going to overlap after we have finished this project. So now this is the middle of the front. You will make sure you match it when we are overlapping. So here I'm cutting out the front. Please, this is on a straight green. This is on a straight green, please. It's not on a bias green. This is cut on a straight green. Maybe I will upload a video describing green lines so that you will understand the different green lines and how it affects the fall of a fabric. I will do that. I will try and do that. So here is the front pattern. You can see how the shower color is. I've also gone ahead to cut for the back. I left a line. The back will have an opening at the center back. See, I cut it horizontally is stretching, but lengthwise it is not stretching. Okay, sideways is stretching. It's the same way I am going to cut my lining. I'm notching my allowances so that while stitching it will be easy. Note that these allowances will eventually be slightly you know, I will come in more while stitching because this fabric is stretchy. Now here, now here I have my front and the back pattern. As you can see, this is the back. I have applied hastay to the back. You can see the lining piece, the crepe, and they are all stretching along the same part. Please, this is very, very important. This is the front. It's also stretching, it's stretching sideways. Please ensure you do this don't allow the you know lining to stretch differently from the main fabric so here is what i will be attaching to this lining so that when the shower collar flips open it will not be the lining that will be showing so this is how i'll be fixing this to this okay i just marked the line that will help me to fix it when i am sewing i hope you understand so here I've gone ahead to cut everything that I need. The next step is stitching. I've already stitched down this to the lining piece. You see how I stitched it. I just moved in by half inch from the line that I marked and then stitched it and flipped it over. I hope you understand what I did. I've also gone ahead to stitch my darts on this very thing. You can see I've stitched my darts. You know, I marked my dart intake. I've also stitched my dart for the front pattern, as you can see. 
I marked my dart intake. Ensure you take exactly the dart that is resulting on the waist after closing your side bust dart. You know, side bust dart closure increased the waist dart. So now this is the back. I'll go ahead and iron and I will show you every bit of the process I'll be taking to make this. I've joined the flay as well. I hope you understand what I'm showing you. I've joined the flay and see how I joined the hem. I stitched there and I'll be turning it over like this and I'll be applying hemming gum. Okay, hemming gum and iron it to stay in place like that before I apply my lining. I hope you understand. I'm just trying to put you through every process that I took to make this beautiful dress. Now, this is the lining. I've also stitched down the sides. Now, here I have my back. I've already stitched it down. I have stitched it and ironed. This is the lining. See how I used Haste to hold down that place. I hope you can see that collar side. Yes, that place. Now I'm joining it, making sure that the middle of that collar part is meeting the middle of the back, the center back. Ensure that it's rhyming. Watch closely to see how I am joining these. I'll join it all through. I'm notching the starting of my shoulder at neck. See how I notched it. So I will be stitching down through to my shoulder tip. I hope you understand. So that is how to stitch your shower collar. I've also joined this front. Watch closely. I've joined the front at the neck. I also used his day to, you know, glue it down. Match this middle point. Pin it down. Pin it because the chest is quite slippery. I'll be notching it also so that this place will relax as I complete my stitching. Now I've done just that. I've stitched through and I am notching the neck so that everything will be relaxed. I've done the same thing for the lining fabric. I've notched it and trim off, trimmed off any excess that may be there so that everything will lay flat. I will join the sides of my lining as you can see me do. I will also join the sides of my main fabric because everything is going to be inside. Lining to lining, fabric to fabric. Watch closely. Now I'm going to join my fabric, the body's part of my main fabric and that of the lining, okay? Watch how I'm going to place this. The lining, the right side of the lining facing the right side of the fabric. I'm going to pin it down and I'm going to stitch all through to the waistline. Please watch closely so that you will not make any mistake while doing yours. Stitch it down. Beautiful. I have stitched it down and this is the result. After I stitch down, I'll go ahead and iron. See how it's looking. I notched my midpoint. Okay, ensure that the middle of your pattern is matching that middle notch will help you to know where your overlap is okay though if you stitch your side correctly it will just you know overlap on its own without any stress okay now this is what i have this is what i have i've not ironed it here i'll go ahead and iron and you will see what i have now the next thing to do is to join the flay to this. I'll join the flay and you will see what we have. This is my flay. I've gone ahead to apply hemming gum as I told you on that edge. And this is the lining. I'm just trying to show you more before I join this flay to the bodies. Okay, now I'm going to join this lining to this fabric flay. Okay, see how I'm going to join it. This is how I'm going to join it. After hemming, there's a little allowance remaining there. I'm going to stitch the lining to that part. Yes, I added hemming gum because it is easiest to do it now. And I left that little space for stitching the lining onto the fabric. Okay. 
so this is what i have i will stitch it down then i will leave the upper part open mind you i will leave the upper part open after stitching the lining to the fabric all right so here i've joined my lacing to the bodies as you can see can you see how i attached that lacing to it beautiful because this is the best time to do this not after we have joined the flay to this bodies this is what we have so right now i'm going to join my flay to this and it will be stitched lining to lining and fabric to fabric watch closely to see how i joined this path i hope you are understanding the whole stitching process so now this is what i have i've joined the lining to the fabric flay can you see what we have beautiful the lining was trimmed off about two inches from the center front so that it will go inside after joining it to the flay for to the main fabric of that is the flay main fabric i hope you understand <laughs> okay so here i'm joining these two together watch my description or my illustration i am fixing this all through i've fixed it lining to lining and fabric to fabric this is what i did i will use my needle and thread and tack it down somehow so that one cannot just flip open and see the whole structure inside the gown okay that's what i'm going to do at the end of it all so you can see how beautiful the inside of this dress is looking already okay so that is how to make your suit like shower collar gown like this so i joined everything lining to lining and fabric to fabric is only the sleeve i'll be attaching like externally i just decided to do that okay it's just that my sleeve is not the same length with the one in the picture is actually a short sleeve now this is what I, we have after i have finished that is i've not applied or attached my sleeve right here but you can see how beautiful it's already looking you can see the shower collar you can see the lacing you can see how everything is looking okay here i have attached my sleeve i don't know why the color suddenly changed okay maybe the lighting so I've attached my sleeve here and see how beautiful that this dress is looking. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for always supporting me. And uh, I want to say I love you all and I will see you in my next one. Bye.